Hello, my name is Idelma Delmar and you're watching my search for me. Today we're quickly going to move on to part 2 of the interview with Kavit Harai. Um, in the second part we're going to be talking about different things. Amongst others we're going to be talking about the hurdles, uh, Kavit's hurdles along the way of becoming an entrepreneur. And we're going to be talking about why clarity is so important and what lack of clarity can cost you. And finally, Kavit will be sharing his entrepreneur success framework with uh, the audience. So again, a very exciting interview uh, with lots of uh, excellent advices, hands-on advices, things that you can do at home uh, when you are working on your business, when you are working on your dream. So uh, have a lot of fun and please do share your comments here below the video or on our Facebook page, My Search For Me. And if you think this content is so valuable, feel free to share this video with others. Have fun! you were telling me, I can imagine that a lot of people get the impression, well, this guy really knows what he's talking about and he looks quite confident and he has done, uh, yeah, he's been quite successful, but I can also imagine that along the way there might have been some struggles, some hurdles for you to get to where you are today. Would you mind sharing some Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think the biggest hurdle at different times has been lack of clarity. Okay. And I think it's, it's one that a lot of people face, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Um, I found that the less clear you are about your, your goal, your vision, your purpose, yeah. the harder it is to take action. The more days go by when you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, the more pressure you start to build up on yourself. The more pain that you inflict on yourself because you feel like you have so much to give and you're wasting the time that's going by. And yeah. that time is never going to come again. So I faced lots of moments of lack of clarity and uh, I faced times when uh, I have not known what to do with the business at certain times, I've not known where to go, I've not known whether I should continue doing what I'm doing or pack it in. Mm -hmm. um, as a musician specifically, I remember deciding at some point that this is enough, I'm not going to do it anymore. And then having to re-engineer my thinking to say that actually no, this is my passion and I want to do it. Yeah. Uh, and to feed. Uh, myself the thoughts that are required to realize that this is what I want to do. Okay. Uh, once in my, another idea is that once in my music business, after five years, I thought, well, I've created all the content that I could potentially teach to people. Mm -hmm. Anything else I create is going to be recreating the same thing, okay. like in different formats. Yeah. I'll take the knowledge from this and put it into this and sell it for another $50. Mm -hmm. I'll take the knowledge from a CD and put it into another book and sell it for another £10. Yeah. Like, I thought that was pointless. I felt like it wasn't doing myself any justice, nor and it would just be stealing money that people could just buy the same thing instead of recreating it. Yeah. So I decided that I should create a membership site. Okay. And I thought that if I put all my, my information in a membership site, uh, and people paid a monthly fee, they would get the information, they would get a new newsletter that I would produce. Yeah. So I committed in my marketing that I would write an eight-page newsletter for musicians every month, mm -hmm. and they would get all of my product, which I've been selling for the last four years. So I did that. I made the first month free and 15,000 people signed up for free. Wow, um, they got all my product, they got my first newsletter and in the second month I had only 2,000 people left paying. Okay. Because all of them had got my free product. Yeah, yeah, I'd lost free. everything. Yeah. I'd literally, because of that lack of clarity of what to do with my business at that particular point, yeah. people that should have paid or maybe could have paid or maybe would have paid in the future, they'd all taken all the free the stuff for free. Yeah. So that was a really eye-opening moment. I share that story quite a bit because for me that was like, how can you make a decision like that without thinking through all the consequences of what could potentially happen to the full view of the business? Yeah. Like it's great from the purpose of helping musicians, it's great for the purpose of giving value mm -hmm. to one extent, but I also think that if somebody doesn't pay for something, they're not going to experience the full value of it. Because yeah. they're not going to take it as seriously. They don't appreciate this. Exactly. Forward. Exactly. Yeah. And especially musicians, to find $30 and $50 to buy something is not easy. But when they find that, they make it more useful, they make it more valuable. Yeah. So that was another moment, another example of lack of clarity, and I think it comes up and down. Yeah. But while we're talking about lack of clarity, I'm going to share very quickly what I think is, what I believe and I've created to be the entrepreneur success framework. 
Okay. Because I think it might be useful. Um, I think that every person in business goes through this phase of lack of clarity. And I think that the reason most people are on that verge of being successful but aren't successful mm -hmm. is because of that lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. The more clear you are, the more healthier the business is going to be. Mm -hmm. So every time that I've found that lack of clarity, i found unhealthiness in my business. i found tiredness in my business. i found lethargy in my business. i found myself struggling on what to do next. Yeah. But whenever I found clarity, I found progress happens. I found that uh, the speed of action is way faster than anything else. Yeah. And um, so clarity is really important. But what clarity gives you, which allows you to take action faster, is courage uh, and confidence. So clarity leads to confidence, and when you get clarity and confidence together, you get courage. Okay. And courage mm. is different to confidence. Courage is an inner feeling that... Confidence is still slightly external. Courage is that deep inner feeling that I can do this. Yeah. That I can move forward to this path. That I can take this idea and go really straight ahead and make this happen. Yeah. Because courage is the antidote to fear. Mm. And fear is false evidence appearing real. So when you have courage, you then have certainty. The fourth C. Clarity, confidence, courage, and certainty. Okay. And when you have certainty, you have zero doubt. Yeah. And when you have zero doubt, how can you therefore have lack of clarity? Yeah. How can you have, how can you have any worry about what's going to happen and, and how it's going to happen? Yeah. So that's, that's what I found really useful as a, as a formula for making that happen. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think that would be for a lot of people really a very nice insight, something to think about and uh, to do something with it. Uh, I mean, you've mentioned several times clarity. How would you define clarity? What is clarity according to you? So when you define a goal or when you define what you want to do with your life? Yeah, I don't, I don't have an exact definition. I think I'm still developing one, but I feel clarity is when the path from A to B is clear. Mm -hmm. So y you know that you want to build a business that generates six figures. If that's your goal, yeah. then you know that in order to generate six figures, your, your product is, let's say, $1,000 and you want to make $100,000, yeah. then you need 1,000 sales. Mm -hmm. So in order to get 1,000 sales, you need to be having, you need to put your advertising out and it's going to cost you this much to run your advertising. Okay. And in order, if you're going to pay this much to run your advertising, you need this many leads. And therefore, if you get this many leads, you'll make the sales. Yeah. So therefore, to make the sales, you need this many leads. Yeah. So that whole math, math, mathematical process, that whole uh, idea of exactly how it all works, if you have that vision down, um, that's, that's one definition of clarity. Okay. Yeah. For some people, it's, I want to write a book. I want to be known as an author. I want to write several books thereafter. Mm -hmm. I want the book to be able to be about, uh, it could be two things. It could be, I want the book to give me fame. I want the book to give me authority. I want the book to create me a following so I can write stuff and people can listen. Yeah. Or the book can be about just releasing my words, like releasing my craft, being, being yeah. focused on the art and not worrying about the result. And that could be clarity too. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, vision is important, no doubt about it. I absolutely believe vision is, vision is important. Yeah. But I think that more important than the vision is the smaller steps you have to take right now. Yeah. Because if you don't take those, the vision is never going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so the clarity about the greater picture doesn't have to be 100% clear, but the clarity about the next steps does have to be yeah. clear. Yeah. I don't know if that answered that. No, no, no. And yeah. I totally recognize that because in the past I used to have a lot of goals. And yeah. I used to see the end goal, but I wasn't really sure about everything else. And then at the end of the year, I was wondering how come I didn't achieve all my goals. And uh, starting this year, I took a different approach and I... Uh, took my goal and then, like you said, I defined all the little steps I had to take in order to get closer to the goal. And all of a sudden, I got more clarity. Indeed, it was much easier to get closer. So I do recognize that. Yeah. 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 And Brilliant. I think for a lot of people, I think they always have this big dream, but they stop and think, but what can I do today yeah. to get a little bit closer? Yeah. And then, you know. If somebody wants to achieve else. the beach body in time for summer. Yeah. So I guess you have to look at the different elements of that. There's three parts, in my opinion. There's diet, there's exercise, and there's mindset. Yeah. So now then we have to do a self, self analysis. What, what is wrong with my diet right now? And how do I need to correct it in order to achieve the ideal diet yeah. uh, in the right time frame? Uh, what do I need to be doing daily on an exercise basis or, week, or every few days on an exercise basis? How long for? How consistent do I have to be? And for how long? Yeah. 
Yeah. And the same with the mindset. Where is my head at right now? Like a lot of it, I think, comes from the mind. Uh, yeah. What do I believe about myself? How much can I push myself? That all comes from the mind. Yeah. And so, if we get those three areas aligned, then that vision is aligned. But the baby steps that are required on all the fronts are there to get you there. Yeah. And so, clarity of of or coming up with the goal is great. The clarity for that is great. But the confidence comes from the baby steps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that will help you in yeah, order to exactly. really progress. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, one other question that I had. Uh, I mean, you talked and talked us a little bit more about your own path to where you are today. Uh, looking back, are there any things that you would have done differently or that you would have liked to know before you started? Or can you say anything about that? Yeah, I'm not sure if I would do anything extremely differently. I would spend more time being more clear. I mean, like I, w I would block out time. That's what I would do. Actually, I would block out time. I do that now, but I didn't think I would. I think I should have started that earlier. Yeah. I would block out time in the week specifically for myself. Okay. Because that's when I get all my best ideas when I'm not at the computer, running a computer-based business like an online business. I get all my time when I'm not meeting clients. All my ideas. Yeah. I get all my ideas when I'm not actually finishing work. Okay. When I'm sitting in a coffee shop reading. When I'm sitting somewhere brainstorming. When I'm taking a walk. When I'm meeting and hanging out with friends socially, okay. that's when all my best ideas come. Yeah, that's when all the creativity comes from. All everything that I've like decided or made or started has all come from those moments. Yeah. So I would I would basically if I if I had known that if I had believed that I think I've read about that but if I truly believed that you know like people read about it and say well how do you how does your best idea come when you're actually not working mm -hmm. like how does that make sense mm -hmm. like you're you go to work to do the ideas yeah but you can't force those things those are things that you have to be open for yeah. and you have to train yourself to be open for listening to things seeing things seeing how things work and fix together and make your mind such that it is always problem solving and looking for problems that people have and finding those solutions yeah. if we're always training ourselves to be more problem solving based doing something for someone else doing something for another community, doing something for an idea, then uh, we'll get those ideas. And I think that's something that I wish I would have ingrained earlier. Okay. I'm not saying, I think, you know, I have it right now, I'm working on it, I'm developing it further, but I think I would have loved to have started that, started that idea way earlier. Okay. The one thing I still haven't done, but I'm gonna make it happen this year, is writing a book. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's something that I've wanted to do for several years, but haven't yet done. Yeah. Uh, and I wish I'd done that earlier. Uh, but no time like the present, right? So. Yeah, <laughs> Um, but perhaps for some other people who yeah, yeah. are listening. Exactly. Yeah. If you're an expert, if for those that are listening, if you're an expert and you've developed that expertise over time, that authority over time, the very first thing you need to do is write a book. Yeah. Like, looking back at my journey, if I'd written a book three years ago, it would have made a bigger difference than what it has right now or what it might right now. Okay. Or, or where I am right now. Yeah. So just put everything that you have in, in terms of your ideas down on paper yeah. and get it out there. Yeah. And it helps. It helps tremendously. And why would you say it helps so much? Because then all of a sudden you become an authority or something? I think you're already an authority with the work that you do, uh, even without a book, but it enhances it. Yeah. It also allows you to be more approachable by media, like yeah. newspapers, magazines, websites, big blogs, they want to be able Easier to feature to you. Easier to find you. Yeah. And, and of course people partner with you better. Yeah. Like you'll find more partners, you'll find more trust, you'll find more authority, you'll get more customers to recognize you more quicker the sales process will decrease when you have a book okay it's it's like a uh, a business card but better yeah 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 excellent i think that's a really good tip for others this was the second part of the interview with kavita rai and again some great stuff that he shared with us he talked about several things one of them being lack of clarity and what it can cost you when you are not completely clear on the direction that you're taking. He then shared with us what he calls the Entrepreneur Success Framework, which consists out of four C's. Clarity. It all starts with clarity. Knowing exactly what you're after and how you're going to get that. Because that will help you in order to get confidence. If you combine clarity with confidence, that will lead to courage. The courage to need to do what you need to do. And um, that will lead eventually to certainty. Once you know exactly the path, you, have, you are clear about it, you are confident about it, and you have the courage, you know it's going to happen and uh, nothing will stop you. 
So I thought that it was really, really uh, helpful. So I also advise you to keep that in mind when you're working on your plans, when you're working on your business, on your dreams. It's a really, really good reminder, the four C's. Great. So um, in the following and the final uh, um, part of the interview that I will be sharing with you guys next week, we are going to talk about Kapit himself. Um, about his beliefs, about his role models, but he will also share his advice when it comes to finding your life mission, your true purpose in life, what you can do. So stay tuned if you enjoyed the last two um, parts of the interview with Kavit. I can guarantee you, you will also really enjoy the last part. So uh, share this video, this interview, if it was valuable for you. Leave your comments under this video and uh, or go to the Facebook page My Search For Me and I'll see you again next week.